Welcome to Maestro Classics. I'm Bonnie Ward-Simon. I'm the Executive Director of Maestro Classics and I'm very pleased to welcome a young French horn player here today, Luke Souter. Welcome. Thank you for having me. that it would be nice to have a French horn player because there's some wonderful French horn music on some of the recordings that we do for Maestro Classics. One of them, of course, is Peter and the Wolf, which features three horns that represent the wolf. And Merry Pranks of Master Till, which is Till Eulenspiegel, also has some of the most wonderful music for French horn. Um, it's composed by Richard Strauss, who himself was a French horn player. So, having Luke here today, I had a few questions for him, because not every young person even knows about the French horn as an option of what instrument they should play. So, can I ask you, Luke, what made you want to play the French horn? Well, it actually wasn't my decision to make. Uh, in elementary school, I was always a musical person. Uh, but to get into the band, uh, you needed to do a bunch of musical tests, and then even then, the band director uh, chose the instrument for you. And so she would look at everybody's hands and mouths, have us do lip trills, and then she would decide what instrument she wanted for us. And then she would she called up my mom and said, look, I want uh, your son Luke to do the French horn, and it looks like he has the uh, right uh, lips for it and hands for it, and so I'd like to try it. How old were you when this happened? Well, I had to be around nine or ten years old. It was the fourth grade. Fourth grade. Very nice. So you began in school. Yes. And was your school music teacher your first French horn teacher? Yes, that was my first French horn teacher. So how long was it before you got a private teacher? Uh, I got my first private teacher in seventh grade. Uh, it's when I really started to seriously start going after French horn. And uh, her name was Carolyn Clark wonderful French horn professor and she's been my private tutor ever since then. I still do lessons with her today. She's absolutely wonderful. Now when you first began, how long did you practice? And was it fun? <laughs> Personally, I always like actually playing and interacting with the band more than I like uh, practicing. Let's just say I didn't practice as much as I probably should have, but uh, within the first couple of years actually my band teacher was a bit strict and she made us fill out logs for uh, for practicing, so I had to practice around half an hour a day, um, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really uh, that dedicated to practicing. Right. Well, we trust you filled out the log. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. When did you begin to really practice seriously? I would say in the seventh grade. Seventh, uh, seventh grade when I started my lessons with Carolyn. Um, it's when I really started to develop more of a love for the French horn. Um, I always enjoyed playing it, but it's when I realized that I was going to high school for music. We were around seventh grade is when I realized that that's really what I wanted to do in life. And so I started getting private lessons. So tell me, what's the difference between going to a high school for music and art and just going to a regular high school that has a band? Well, going to a musical high school, um, everything in the school, even academics, winds up being centered around the music. Uh, people will sometimes uh, have to miss classes for, uh, for musical performances and orchestras. Uh, usually have more than one band that you are required uh, to be a part of. There's bands, orchestras, jazz bands, and then other certain special circumstances. Very nice. So, you said before you enjoy playing in ensembles. Yes. Yes. Um, I think that that always makes it more fun. I think it's very hard for piano students because Playing the piano can be very lonely, but if you play an instrument like the French horn, um, you get to play with other people. Do you think that playing an instrument helped get you into college? Yes, it played a big role in that. Uh, French horn is actually notorious for uh, being very attractive to colleges for scholarship opportunity. Um, it is in the brass section, it's more on the difficult side to play because you do need a more developed ear in order to play French horn. And so uh, when I would go to college and audition for colleges, they were very interested in making sure that I could afford going to college. Do you have a favorite piece of music uh, with French horn? 
Uh, I actually, uh, you mentioned Peter and the Wolf before. Yes. Uh, that is, I listened to Peter and the Wolf a lot of times as a very young kid, and I always recognized the three French horns coming in as the wolf. The harmonies were incredible. But if I had to pick a more classic piece, I would probably have to pick uh, Mozart's fourth horn concerto in E flat major, and probably I'd say the third movement. I like the first movement as well, but the third movement's my favorite. <laughs> Do you know how many feet of tubing there is if you stretch out a French horn? I, I used to know this. It's either 20 or 40. Right. I think it's 20 feet. 20 feet. Yeah, that was my I, initial. I remember someone who actually came to a concert and as a demonstration had a French horn that was uncoiled. Came from a, a museum. Yes. And he had. So, I see you have three keys here. And you also have something for your thumb. Yes. When you press one of those keys, you don't just get one note. No, you get a multitude of notes. And this is actually uh, a concept that a lot of brass instruments have. Many brass instruments have valves like these. Um, and, you know, obviously a brass instrument can play more than just three or four notes. And so what you have to do is in order to get different notes using certain combinations of valves, you need to adjust your embouchure and your airflow. So the tighter you make your lips, then the faster the air will spin and the higher the note will be. The looser you have it, and that means the slower the air stream's moving, you can go. It's almost sound like a tuba. Well, we can actually go into a uh, tuba range. The mm -hmm. French horn is actually has a very wide range. It's an alto instrument. Uh, it can hit notes that tubas can hit in their upper register, and uh, it can hit some notes that trumpets can hit. There is an extra special something with French horns, yes. and that is that there's a trigger, isn't it, on the on the back? Yep, thumb trigger there, and that transfers the horn uh, into B flat horn, uh, which kind of basically changes the key of the whole instrument and allows you to hit uh, different notes easily during, with different fingerings. Mm -hmm. So um, I could, if I played uh, my version of a D. Oh. I can use just the first valve, but if I was in B flat, I would press both the first and second valve down. And it can come out louder, smoother, more effectively. We usually use that for uh, higher notes. Mm -hmm. So do you, is that written in the music or is that something you just figure out? No, that's something you tend to just figure out. Uh, really, there's a, a lot of different key combinations that you can do in order to get the same note. Uh, the first and second valve are actually equal if you had just pressed the third valve. So if I wanted to play A, I could also play it with the third valve. Very complicated. In, in the beginning, yeah. It's a tricky instrument, and I have to congratulate you for taking it up and pursuing it, and I wish you many years of happy playing. Oh, thank you very much.